welcome. The focus of today's video is Sonic on the PTX 1008. Today, we're going to discuss Sonic architecture, PTX hardware, and then we're going to jump on the PTX 1008 and take a look at the Sonic CLI, Redis DB, and Juniper's high performance running stack CRPD. And since with the PTX 1008, we jump from only supporting fixed form chassis to modular chassis, at the very end, we will demonstrate FRU insertion and removal. Hi, my name is Jessica Garrison, and I'm a technical marketing engineer in Juniper's Cloud Ready Data Center team. So let's get started. First, let's start with the Sonic architecture. Sonic stands for Software for Open Networking in the Cloud. It is found on GitHub and managed by the Open Compute Project. Sonic runs on Debian Linux. And if you look at the top part of this architecture, you can see a lot of different containers. We'll be able to see those containers later on in the demo. If you look at the centerpiece, you can see Redis. Redis is an in-memory data structure that is an integral part of Sonic. Redis also connects to SyncD. SyncD programs the ASIC through the SI. Now what has changed is from going from fixed form to modular, we now have HAL or our hardware abstraction layer. So HAL is what is used to communicate to the drivers and the PFEs. So let's talk about our portfolio. In the center, we have the PTX 1008, which is a 13U device. And right above it, we have CRPD. This is what we will be demonstrating today. Above it, we have a controller option, so you can use Juniper's North Star or a third party system, such as maybe something intent based. At the very bottom, we have our switching family. Right now, Sonic is supported on the QFX 5210 and the 5200, but we will be expanding support within the QFX family in 2021. So let's jump onto a PTX 1008. So the first thing we're going to do on the CLI is just to do a uname-a. And again, Sonic runs on Debian Linux. And a quick reminder that Juno's originated on FreeBSD, but is also supported on Linux. So the entire hardware platform that supports Juno's Evolved also supports Sonic on Juniper. The next command I'm going to run is docker ps-a. We just want to showcase the different containers that are running on the PTX 1008 and we will be utilizing the telemetry and CRPD containers later. The show version command showcases multiple things, including the Sonic software version. Under ASIC, it states Juniper. This is a reference to Juniper's Triton Silicon. The Triton Silicon scales to 400 gigabit ethernet. It has a forwarding capacity of 115.2 terabits per second. And it has an efficiency of 0.14 watts per gig power. In the show chassis line card command, we can see that there are three slots present. And because this only has two states, absent literally just means not present. We will be utilizing this command later on in the demo when we remove line card one. In the show chassis modules command, you can see the hardware on the device. We will be utilizing a line card called JNP 10K LC 1201. This is a Triton line card that has 36 400 gig ports and has a capacity of 14.4 terabits per second. Let's pop into the Redis CLI. We're gonna go into DB6, which is the state DB, because we're gonna check on the current state of slot one. This is the slot we will be removing later on in the demo. When we do a query or hgetall, we can see that its current state is present. Before we move on to the demo, let's take a quick look at the configuration file. ConfigDB.json is where the Sonic configuration is stored. Here we can see the configuration that is currently on the PTX 1008. Now let's take a look at CRPD. Through the Docker exec command, we can get into the CRPD CLI, and this will look just like Juno's. Through show version, we see we're running 20.4 R1.8. Through show configuration, we can see that VGP ECMP is configured. While we're not concentrating on VGP for this demo, we will be showcasing a line card coming down. And since routes are distributed across FPC0 and FPC1, you will see 32 of those 64 peers come down. Let's take a look at the topology. 
On the left, we have the Ixia connected to the PTX 1008 via FPC0 and FPC1. Connected to the PTX 1008 is also the QFX 5200. The 5200 is also connected to a server. The server contains 32 VMs that are being leafed out onto the topology. Now going back to the connections between the Ixia and the PTX 2008, we are gonna take down line card one. There's gonna be a hiccup and then traffic is gonna resume on line card zero. Now let's set up our session so we can see what's happening on the device. On the bottom right, we'll connect to an external collector. Previously, we had stated that we will be using the telemetry container. From this external collector, we will also be able to see when slot one is present or absent. On the bottom left, we'll do the show BGP command. We'll be able to see when 64 peers are dropped down to 32. And on the top window, we're gonna have interface counters, but only for the active interfaces. This will allow us to see the traffic flowing through the PTX 1008. Let's look at the XCS setup. Under Traffic BGP, we have 64 neighbors configured across two line cards. Under Traffic, those same two line cards are flowing at 20% line rate. Now let's remove the line card. On the top panel, we'll be able to see the state go from U to D or from up to down. On the bottom left panel, we'll be able to see the down pierce increment from zero to 32. Now back to that top panel, we'll clear the sonic counters so that the traffic patterns are clearly visible. On the bottom right, we can reissue the same command to see that the state of slot one has transitioned from present to absent. Checking back on the Ixia, we can see minimal traffic loss when slot one was removed. Traffic flow has recovered and the percentage loss is now decreasing. So now it's time to insert the line card. While the line card comes back online, let's note that alternative multi-ASIC virtual output queuing chassis proposals leverage BGP to interconnect and exchange route state between the line cards. This introduces additional configuration complexity and BGP behavior modifications for the control plane to safely accommodate both IBGP and eBGP. With the PTX and Juniper's implementation, we've abstracted the underlying line cards, presenting a single unified system to Sonic, allowing for features like OIR to transparently add and remove interfaces. Also assisting in simplified management are supported Juno's features like XML RPC and the JET APIs. Checking back in our sessions, we can see that slot one is now present. On the top panel, we can see its transition from D to U or from down to up. And in the bottom left-hand panel, we can see that the peers have come back up again and that there are no longer any in the down state. Coming back to the Ixia, we can see that the traffic loss percentage is still decreasing. However, we're gonna clear the stats so that we can see a zero percentage loss on that bottom line. To recap what we've seen, we have a system with 64 BGP peers across two line cards with 20% line rate traffic. We removed a line card and saw the peers go down by half as expected while the normal BGP recovery procedures occurred. Then we reinserted the line card and we successfully saw all the peers and traffic revert back to their expected configuration and flow. Thanks for joining and for additional information, please check out Juniper's disaggregation playlist on YouTube. There you can see three additional videos, including 400 gig line rate MaxSec demo, the OCP 2020 talk called MPLS and MaxSec on the PTX 2008. These are areas where Juniper has or will be contributing to the Sonic community. And of course, solving the multi PFP chassis challenge in Sonic with the Juniper PTX. And this has a video and a corresponding blog. Thank you.